Hello everyone, <clears throat> it's me, and I want to talk about why I feel like purple is not where it should be or needs to be. There are a lot of people that are happy with where purple is, and I don't, I frankly just do not understand at all what where they're coming from. I've tried talking to people about it, and I don't know. They all really disagree, or worse, think I'm a moron or something, which, you know, I might be. I'm the only one, so, you know, by definition, I might be crazy. Um, so I just want to talk about that. <clears throat> so I've kind of presented, like, how I think about this, and... Yeah, we'll just go. So, I feel like purple does as little as effectively as other factions, like... Uh, its early game minions are just worse... A lot of its late game minions are actually scary, but I feel like yellow's minions are potentially scarier? You know, like, I feel like green's minions are scarier, like... I think purple's late game minions are up there, but I still feel like they're, like, slightly worse. I don't know, like, there's not as many good big minions, like, purple only has, like, two really good big minions. Um, and it doesn't have, like, the survivability factor that yellow does. Uh, purple has uh, Peach of Life, but, I mean, I don't know if that's enough. Like, its defensive capabilities don't feel as strong as yellow. So it just feels like a worse yellow, sort of. And you're going to hear that theme go on and on as I talk about purple. Um, it's not entirely clear what purple's win condition is, because I feel like you're not supposed to play purple like it's yellow. But that's what it's kind of turning into, because there's just no other way to play purple. Um, and I want to note that this new patch is still new, so... You know, my... I, we could... My phone's going off. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna... Alright. Cool. So... <clears throat> the new patch is still new, so again, I... There's a lot... Potentially a lot still to discover. I feel like not much has changed other than the big minions are just scarier now. And now purple has a goal to go to versus earlier where it just really didn't have a goal. Um, you could also say this is just a lot of people playing purple at the moment. And then in like a month's time everyone's going to realize purple is still bad. And just stop playing purple because it's worse than yellow. I don't know. I, I just feel like it's worse yellow. Um, but... It does offer some advantages. It has some things going for it, and we'll we'll talk about those. Um, I have here the pre-patch faction performance and usage stats, kind of to highlight like nobody in Mithril used purple. It had like the lowest win percentage. You know, obviously orange is up here, blue and red. These are the strongest colors, and yellow. I feel like yellow is stronger than this, but. You know, it, like, the numbers feel relatively close, except there's, like, a huge drop-off here with purple. So, I felt like that was worth highlighting, but... That was pre-patch. Pre um, what is purple? <clears throat> purple is one of the six factions in Mythgard and the last color to be added. Purple has a really cool aesthetic and is beloved by the community, which is why I'm kind of terrified of making this video, to be honest. I, like, I feel like everyone's gonna yell at me. Um, purple seems to currently have a little bit of everything, like, like a worse version of that in most cases, and also has stealth and item mechanics, which feel on the weak side to me, like, I feel like it's not powerful enough to drive purple towards a win in most cases, except for orange purple, in which items are really nice to toss with the disc of Circadia, and then it's cool that way. Um... But that just feels like it's incidental more than it's, like, specifically purple. Like, if green had items, you would just use green instead, for example, instead of purple for items. Like, items being tossable just feels really incidental. It has nothing... It doesn't have much to do with purple being purple, in my opinion. Um, how did purple change post-buff? Um, purple can now get more random wins due to Jensuk and Celestial Dragon and other big scary units like um, Perfect Grade and um, 
the other minion that's um I forget what it's called. It's it's the other one that's paired with perfect grade essentially. Um those min those units are pretty scary. And, you know, provided you're not playing red orange and they have a dark passenger and or a seal in hand, you know, let's just ignore that. Because that's just pointless. You can edge case everything. It is a scary threat and you have to answer it. And if you can't answer it, you are going to lose the game. So purple has that going for it. That at least feels like a win condition versus earlier where I felt like you couldn't even do that as purple. But now I feel like you can. So that's that's a positive. And I do think purple got a lot better, but it still has a long way to go. I feel like I feel like it's still clearly the worst color. Um, purple has a slightly more has slightly more surviving power due to Peach. Like Peach got like it didn't even need the buff really. Like it went from seven minions to six where it draws the card. This is really nice. This really should be what a Wonder Drug really is basically. Like this is good. Um, Wonder Drug heals, like, an insane amount. And draws too much. Again, like, this is worse than Wonder Drug, though. Like, <laughs> it's just the worst version of Wonder Drug. It's good. It's really good. It's one of Purple's best cards, but it's still, like, worse than Wonder Drug. Sure, it might heal a little bit more, but, like, you also draw less. <clears throat> and you also have to have six minions die for you to draw a card. But it is cheap. It's very cheap. Some units like Hotel Barkeep and Hungry Ghost are now strong enough to stay on the field and have to be answered. Like, a big problem with purple that I have, again, is, like, maybe this is a really bad comparison, but, like, I like to square up decks and cards against red-orange, because that's, like, the golden standard. If you can't beat red-orange, you're fucked, because you're, half your games are going to be red-orange, essentially. Um, there's also, like, Rainbow Valkyrie control, blue control with rainbow, red blue, uh, all the necromantic decks. But like, just just as an example, like red orange, like that's gonna be the deck you're probably most likely to run into, on like the highest levels. And like, for the most part, these cards don't have surviving power, right? Because like Simzuin is like a two-two, uh, Steam Bun is like a one-one. But, like, at least now, like, Hotel Barkeep got buffed up. Yeah, it was a 2-4 before. It could survive, and it was one of Purple's best cards secretly until recently no one really played with it that I knew. And only now, like, before the buff. It, it really took Orange Purple for people to, like, warm up to Hotel Barkeep. But now that Orange Purple, like, dropped, now everyone's starting to see Hotel Barkeep as just, like, a nice fat unit that survives. It's it's a worse, um, it's a worse shop worn bowl, but, like, it can just survive a really long time, and you you probably have to trade two units into it, which is really nice. Like it's a nice card for a three cost for purple, especially since um, it's not rare. I think it's uncommon, so like you can play th with three of these, and you probably will in any given purple deck. Hungry Ghost got buffed like insanely. Now it's really scary. It's kind of like a Kara Morning Wives, except when units die instead of live. So like, I see this card and I think, ooh, this is really cool with red. Maybe I'll play red-purple, and then I got trashed by literally everything, so... Um, I don't think it's good, but then again, I probably haven't found the right combination yet. It's very early still, with the patch. But, I don't know, I felt like it was worth exploring. I messed around with it for like three hours, I didn't find anything. Um, I feel... I feel like I just missed something or something. Like I feel like red-purple should be good with like Hungry Ghost and such. But Hungry Ghost is also a five cost, and... Red has, like, Minotaur to play, and Hades to play, and then Hungry Ghost is, like, the best purple can do. It doesn't even have Overrun. It's just a big, fat Kara Morning Wives that's kind of worse because it's more expensive. And it's based on minions dying instead of living, which... I don't know. It feels... It, it, it could scale up a lot faster, but it also feels worse. And then there's also, like, Red Carnival Synergy. I don't know. Like, there's there's ideas there. I just feel like I haven't figured them out yet. Um, but yeah, Hungry Ghost does feel like it's a potential card that's going to be, like, really, really nice. I just have to think about how to utilize it. And I'm sure other players have already done this, and they figured it all out. I haven't really been following the meta. I'm just 
thinking this stuff or playing on my own usually. Um, <clears throat> what do the other factions do? Um, I just listed all the colors here. You know what the colors are. The in-game blurbs, like I, I looked up the in-game blurbs and I've supply, uh, I've put them all in, and I'm gonna like talk about them all, the, what all the colors do because I feel like it's important to compare them to purple. Um, because purple to me feels unfinished still. It feels like it needs one or two more things before it can really shine. Uh, like that's why it feels bad to me. I think ultimately is because it just it doesn't feel like it's ready. It feels like it needs one more thing. Um. So the in-game blurbs feel more focused on aesthetic and feel than in-game competitiveness. And you'll see that with some of the the blurbs just don't, like, they have the overall focus. And then you look at, like, what the competitive decks are actually doing, and it's, like, not 100% what the blurb is. Which is more apparent with orange and green, um, I mean, sorry, orange and purple than really anything else. Which is kind of scary, because it feels like orange and purple are the most, like, underdeveloped classes in Mythgard. And I know people are, like, up in arms when I say that about orange, because, like, you know exactly how to play with orange. But, like, when you compare it with the blurb, like, you're not really playing orange the way they intended you to play it. Which is weird. Um, and that's partly why. I don't know. So, like, orange and purple of the... Or, I mentioned that already. Okay, cool. So, like, red. A lot of theme. You can just kind of skip that. Aggressive color with a lot of good good combat abilities, like Rush, Agile, Frenzy, Frenzy and Alpha Strike. Uses player life as a resource. Demonic Pack. Uh, and then a bunch of Percy brings hope and colorful... Un like, that doesn't... That's just aesthetic. That is, literally has nothing to do with the competitiveness. Um, anyway. <clears throat> so, like, yeah. I wrote, uses aggression, rushes, rushes opponents down, likes to use life as a resource. I ripped that line because it summed it up pretty well. In exchange for quick fixes and speed, so, like, Panic Raider, Hit Course Feast, Crimson. Uh, I almost said Crimson Tide, like the, <laughs> like Alabama. Um, good draw on Hit Course and Raider, but you might not have time to use it. So, like, it's very interesting because, like, Red, red has, like, is really fragile and like not very defensive so like you're spending like a bunch on ichors and yeah it costs life and it's cheap draw but like also like if you're on your back foot and you're like out of cards it feels really bad to play this because then like your opponent gets like a potential free turn to just attack you again so it feels well balanced with red like as a color to where, like, it's better than most draw cards, but it's also, like, not out of control. And you also need three red gems, so it's not, like, spammable. <laughs> Removal spells and controllers subpar, but, like, some really good options exist in Minotaur and Extract Life. Extract Life is incredibly expensive, but you heal off of it. Um, it doesn't work with warded units, and that hurts me a lot more than usual. Oh, Giganto Machia. I completely forgot to add Giganto Machia. Giganto Machia is by, by far the best removal spell. Maybe one of the best in the game, but definitely the best one for red. Um, I wish I could change that. I probably can. Heh, <laughs> I could change it right now if I wanted. Anyway, um, yeah, in my, in my opinion, red feels like it's the best and most fleshed out class competitively. It's very, very clear in how it wins. That's probably because I play with it. But, I don't know. It's it just, it's, like, very simple. It's just, like, rock to head. Like, you, you know exactly what you're doing with red. You want to kill. Um, it's very, very clear. Blue. Blue feels a little bit vaguer at first when you kind of look at it. Like, uh, da -da 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 -da. it's a mid-range color. That sums up blue pretty well. It's very all-around. Balanced minions. Smaller minions band and aid one another while the bigger ones are individually heavy hitters. Common keywords are overrun and regen. So, like, it's very minion focused, much like green. Um, blues enchantment focused. Singing stones, earth slide, braggy. But it also has some decent direct damage in the form of. Uh, okay. So, basically, it's all around emphasis on enchantments. I, I kind of wrote these before looking at the blurb. Um just to kind of compare 
which I thought was interesting. I got a lot of this correct. Good beefy threats and Velk synergies. Demolition Speedway with giant speed stairway. Kara Morning Wives. Oh, some people shit on Kara Morning Wives. I feel like Kara's really... If you have an answer, yeah, sure. But then they have to burn an answer on Kara. And if they don't answer Kara, she gets out of control and you just die. Um, that's usually what I find. You have to answer this card. Joden. Black and Joden's a very, very good card. Good removal options in Magnus. Clap and Cataclysm. Um, they mentioned Forked Lightning and Ice Spike, which are just like mech cards. Ice Spike's okay. It just doesn't really compete with these cards. Good board removal options and Singing Stones and Giant Stairway as well as Thane. Thane is like one of the best two drops, if not the best two drop in the game. It's so good. Like, man. It's actually scary how good it is. It's such a nice surviving minion. Very clear winning objectives. Has a Mario. If you play Smash Bros, you'll know what that means. Like, it's kind of a Mario. Like, it does a little bit of everything. Has an all-around feel. Um, yellow is also very, very clear in terms of uh, what it wants to do. It wants to survive early and burn the opponent's options and then smash and destroy late. Uh, fantastic board wipe and misanthropia. Great spot removal and sapo. Scary control threats in Zolia and Scourge of Serpents. Um, scary threatening minions and God's Bane transport with the twins. Incredible healing ability with Broken Wonder Drug and then Bia Many Falls. Bia Many Fall? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Very good card draw with Zemex Revelation. And then probably not a balanced faction. It's probably a little too strong in the later area. And then maybe it's just Wonder Drug that's too insane. I'm not sure if it's balanced yet, but it has very clear competitive goals. Like, you know exactly what you want. Um, they're mentioning some irrelevant stuff. It's a long-range defensive color focused on growing buffing. Like, they mentioned God's Boring Incubation Chamber, two things I never see. Um, but they do have Obama rings, so. As well as undermining opponents with the Blight. Yep. Yellow has a good non-life tap gain options. Yep. Its minions often have more health than strength. Yep. As well as other defensive abilities such as armor, yep. Defender, yeah, that's that's relevant. Yeah, he's damage clamp, yeah, and then right guard, guard, which isn't. I don't know. It's it's a it's a guide, and it like the first three colors, spot on. Like you know exactly what those cards are, what those factions are doing. Like it's very clear what they want to do. Green, green. I feel like this. I feel like it was a bit off with what they wanted versus what I thought um my first thought with green is like likes to overwhelm with sheer force and spells like I just think like big fat units incredible spell value threats with Bella and Bald Mountain incredible units like Volkov Heavy and late game threats of Iku Terso, Boneyard Abomination and Short Stag, resurrection based effects with like Wake the Bones, Rate the Tombs Hopeless Necromantic has permanent ramping mana with Kolbach which doesn't feel like a green thing at all but it does have it and then overall with faction clear winning goals you just want to beat your opponent up but like slower and more unstoppable it's kind of like a rolling boulder i guess it is kind of like call where it's like you roll you start off slow and then you just roll green is like it's got a tricksy sort of feel i guess um manipulation tricks traitors murmur marching orders rewind tax double think spell focused uses boneyard as a resource there's no mention of like huge units with green which is weird because like that's what i associated first with green before anything else maybe that's just because of um the necromantic decks orange orange was really hard to sum up because there's just so many things it does and it does them so well uh, strongest faction in the game can literally do anything. Superb value in, mo in token minions and to heaven and back. Broken card draw at Parry in the Gates. Insane spot removal with Seal of Exile and Dark Passenger. Incredible board removal with Armageddon Angel. Incredible early game statted minions for the for price. With Serendipity Ifrit, Ghoul, Desert, min uh, Desert Engine, and even post-nerf Shad Beast. Ghoul, to be fair, is a rare. It's... And also a Xerxian Recruiter. They're both like two threes, so like usually you end up trading two cards for one. 
and you play them on turn two, so like they're very nice. Um, even post nerf Shad Beast feels really good still, even though they nerfed it. Um, but like your turn three minions are great. Your two some of your two turn minions are great, and your turn one minions are insane with like uh, re the um, eager recruit. I always forget which one they're called. Eager recruit is just absolutely nuts. It's one. It's it might be my pick for best one drop over Kolobok. I think it's just the best one drop in the game. It's just so good. Um, good luck controlling the board against spammy orange lol. Yeah, like orange is just the sheer king at controlling the board. Like it can put a billion units on the board. It can remove your units from the board that are annoying and big and then it can just out spam everything else deserts feel sort of tacked on and mediocre although they that's also a thing with orange it feels kind of tacked on right because like desert decks are kind of an exception they're not really the norm for orange and that's probably just because orange red honestly but like just my experience with orange is like yeah we don't Zealot and Rebel cards don't really feel that relevant, although they really tried with the with that. Deserts don't feel too relevant, although they really tried with it. Really, it's just like insane minions in the early game just completely overwhelm you. And then it has insane draw and card removal. And by itself, it's just insane. Insanely good. Um, clear win condition based on outvaluing your opponent and spamming board control. But can also outdraw you and remove everything. Probably overpowered. I didn't need to add the probably overpowered. Um, anyway. <clears throat> so, like, that's all the colors. Like, they all feel like they have a very clear goal on how to win. Sorry, my throat is dry. And then, like, we go to purple. Ah, I'm sorry. And then, when, like, we go to purple. And... I had to think for a really long time what purple does. Um, it's currently a supporting faction, clear from clear from blurb that they don't really know what purple does or that they want it to remain a supporting faction. Like you read the blurb, okay, uh, filler, 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 filler. I mean, it's cool filler. I think purple's awesome, but you know, for competitive discussion, we can skip that. Purple contains the card. Okay, okay. Cards from the virtual realm offer off, often create or interact with additional item cards like Hotel Barkeep, Powerful Ramen, Sword Saint with the Biting Blade, which I forgot to add Sword Saint as a good card in the next slide. Uh, but Sword Saint is good. It's situationally good. I feel like its strength is not playing it on curve. I feel like its strength is playing it and then putting its life tap sword on a big minion and just reaping a bunch of health. I feel like that's where it's actually good. It's like not a good early game card, but it's a good late game card, I think. Hoarding Hero is a card that is meh-ish. While Spiritual Cards, Imperative Bell, Stubborn Tengu, Hungry Ghost often have recurring or horror-themed effects. Yep. Cards from any realm can use Purple Signature Stealth Mechanics. So I guess that's what they're focusing on with Purple is just they want it to be a supporting faction. I don't agree with that at all. It really should stand on its own two legs. Um, it really should stand on its own and have its own clear way of winning, in my opinion. It has a lot of understated early minions, with a few exceptions now with the buff, and mediocre mid-game minions, which, again, with very few exceptions. And late-game minions are very, very, very good. Um, so, like, with purple, you want to get to this as fast as you can, and you just want to speed through this as fast as you can. So, like, just knowing that, all right, yellow goes well with purple because you want to survive, and then green goes well with purple because it has Kolobok, and it also wants to survive. So, like, already, you know yellow and purple are going to go great with purple. I'm sorry, yellow and green are going to go great with purple. And you see that with the, um, with later, with some of the decks that you're already seeing now that the patch dropped um because purple just does has horrible early game like it's early game is trash um uses items most of them suck or are hard to get um like simzuans healing potions awful um 
honestly, Healing Potion could read, heal your opponent to maximum HP instead of just 6, and it, nothing would change, really. Um, Divine Compass actually got buffed. It went from spending 1 to Divination 3, although now it's literally for free. So, it's okay now. I wonder if Sniffer is just a better card to play now than, than the other ones. I could see that. Although it still just does one damage, so like it's not gonna kill like half the cast. If it was a two-two with Swift, it would just be strictly better than Simzuin. Yeah, I don't know. Like a lot of the early game cards suck. Like the turn one and two drops are just like, ugh, I don't want to play that. Um, but then like the items that are really good, like the Pearl, you have to play Terrigan to get the Pearl. Um. The card that was, uh, <sighs> I forgot what it's called. It gives the immol it gives the immolation cloak or whatever. It's the can you see guy? Um, lighthouse. I don't know what it's called. It's a six drop. It's like five seven with overrun, and it has the immolation cloak that costs two that does two damage to its three lanes. You'll know what I'm talking about, right? As that. That's a pretty good... That's a very, very good item. It's not fun to play against, but... That's why it's strong, because it's not fun to play against. Um, but it's kind of hard to... It's kind of hard to play. It costs two. Um, it should cost two. And it should be hard to get. Um, yeah. The ramen... The ramen bowl is, like, the one kind of easy item. And then there's also, of course, Night Market. Um... But yeah, their 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 value is limited because it's kind of hard to get. And then like you put it on a minion, and then you use your item, and then the minion dies, and your item's gone. So it's like, wow, okay. Um, I'm not saying you should buff items. I'm just saying like they have limited value, which is fine. But it doesn't feel like purple can win because of items. Is what I'm trying to say. Like they help, but I don't think it's strong enough for purple to stand on as a crutch. Purple uses Stealth, a mechanic that will no doubt get stronger as more Stealth units are added, but it's currently very weak. Um, now with the buff, you have to watch out for the uh, four double gem units, because you could get mimicked. Um, so your default position isn't just to play a Wyvern opposite and swing, because you could pay for it. Um, so now instead, you just want to put a unit in front of the other unit. And then, okay, if it's a decoy, he won't be able to swing. If it's a thriving shade, it's just going to sit there and get bigger. So I guess eventually you can just swing at it in like one or two turns. Um, that's kind of scary. It's a little bit scary. But not that scary for Red Orange. You just have to like plan around it. Um... And then, like, yeah, if they play any of the three-cost ninjas, you literally just play a Wyvern opposite and swing and trade. And Red Orange is happy to trade because it's insane. And Purple's like, oh, I guess I survived another turn. <laughs> Woman stepped closer to playing Celestial Dragon, I guess. That's, that's like, Purple right now. I, I don't like that. Maybe that's what they want with Purple, though. Great spot removal in Racer. Racer is literally a... Uh, an undercosted uh, trapeze artist. It's a two-one. You want it to die so you can get it back with um, with a number of cards. Which is racer is a legitimately one of purple's best cards. It's actually one of the best one drops in the game too. It's up there. It's very, very, very good. Very good card. Okay, spot removal and spirit away. It's just really expensive, but it does deal with like everything. It deals with uh, it deals with warded units. It's it's a very very good spot removal, and it can potentially jank your opponent one turn when they draw it. So like that's really nice, but it is really expensive. Decent spot removal in Pentacle of Flavors and Misfortune. Uh, I feel like Misfortune's overrated currently, but not that overrated. It's just a bit overrated. Uh, currently does not have a clear or unique win condition. Like, it feels unfinished. Again, I'm gonna say again, it... It feels like yellow, but worse, which I mentioned down here. Survive long enough until it puts out big minions and wins, so yellow, but worse. I, I don't think I like 
that with purple. Um, sort of has a value distribute mechanic with items, a juiced item, uh, which no one really uses except canines. I think some variants of canines uses juiced. And then koi fish, I, I don't remember, it's like supreme king koi, I don't know what it's called. I, I have it on a slide in the very next slide. Uh, Emperor Koi, that's what it's called. It distributes some stats, like it puts itself down, it's a blocker for like a turn or two. It also costs four. It probably could, this could honestly cost three, I think, and be pretty good. But right now, I, I don't know, it might be one mana too much. I'm not sure. <clears throat> So, like, how does purple win? These are the cards. These are, like, all of the cards. I don't have this one yet, or this, or these three, or this one. Which is probably why I keep losing with purple, because I don't have these cards. And these ones feel like they're some of the absolute strongest cards for purple. It's probably no coincidence. Um, because I would love to put these in, like, all of my purple decks. Maybe not this one. This one over that, probably. But this one seems really scary, too. Anyway. So I, I compiled a list of total cards that all seem great for purple. I'm probably missing one or two. I'm sure I forgot one or two, but like these cards all seem great. Celestial Dragon feels like a win condition for purple. Like if you don't answer this card, it's an 8-8. Eight, eight. How much health do you have? Like 24, 25? You don't have a lot of health. This kills you in three turns straight up, like at worst if you do not answer this and you can't block it you have to put three minions opposite it and if you do that well i've got a racer and shadow to remove stuff i have rogue eidolon to remove stuff you know i i have answers i have ways of answering that as purple so this is an actual very scary card and every time you're playing purple you have to keep this in mind so, for example, if I'm playing red-orange, I have to keep a Seal of Exile in hand at all times when I know my opponent's playing purple or a Dark Passenger or something. I have to keep this in, I have to keep those in hand to deal with this because red-orange cannot deal with this otherwise. Unless it straight up removes it. I guess you could throw three Wyverns or two Wyverns and a Trapeze Artist at this and then it kills, but like you have to answer this and you have to burn considerable resources to get rid of this. It's, it's at least non-trivial. It's annoying. Back Alley Ronin for turn 4 to be uh, a 5-6 on turn 4 is scary. Um, that's kind of a scary prospect. It sort of combos with... Um, if we turn here... Oh. Hmm, don't have it. Okay. Um, it sort of combos with the Shinobi of Fire. If you play that turn 3 and then this turn 4, you can play this opposite the Shinobi of Fire. And then you can threaten on one hand with this. And then on the other hand, you can threaten with the Flame Scrolls, which could work. It feels a bit on the slow side, but certainly Flame Scrolls, I feel like, could be insane. Um, so this card is like a, you have to put a minion opposite this. You have to start burning resources to answer this. You have to. Because it's just insane. It's just six damage otherwise. It's five dam. No, yeah, six damage otherwise. Gray Meng's Tea House is a nice, nice, nice one drop for purple. It's very, very much needed. It turns all minions into stealth minions. So now you can actually play mind games with your opponent using Gray Meng's. The sad part with it is that um, it it limits you to one location. That's the only sad part about it. But it's so nice because you put a minion in this lane, it gets stealth. You don't know what to do with this card. Like, you don't know what they're playing, potentially, all the time. So there's there's some mind games there, and I feel like that's going to be very interesting in the months to come. When you create a minion in this lane, the top minion in your, get, your deck gets stealth. It gets stealth, too. Like, nice. You don't even have to put it on the Grandma Mengs. I didn't even know that. Um, and the mana cost reduced by one permanently. So, like... This is one of Purple's must-play cards, in my opinion. So just because of this, it's an enchantment you must play. So, like, again, you see some Purple-Blue decks out there with Rainbow Enchantment that, that use this. And uh, it's a decent combo. So this is a very, very good card, in my opinion. Ember Koi, I think, is good. I think it's a good card. Um, I talked to 14 Aerophant. He thinks this card's awful. but He thinks everything's awful, to be fair. So... 
again, like, I want to be fair. I think this card's good. I haven't played with it that much, but it seemed good when I played with it. Um, put it on the right card, and it's, like, really scary. I feel like instead of doing this, I feel like you should choose a card in your hand that it boosts. Maybe that would be too insane. But I feel like it should do that. For its price and for its stats, like I would even I wouldn't even mind it being a 3-3 over a 3-4 if it let me just choose the minion in hand, which would get the boost. That would be so fun. I feel like that's a potential buff right there. That'd be really cool. Maybe that would make it too strong. I don't know. I haven't really thought it through. Hotel Barkeep has incredible stats. And again, like 3-4 on turn 3. That's like Serendipity Ifrit levels of strong in terms of stats. You have to trade two cards to get rid of this, essentially, which is really nice. And then you get the powerful ramen item, and this card alone is just enabled orange purple. It's just be insane. Um, so I guess I was a little bit wrong when I said orange purple is just incidentally relying on items. Like, this one specific card is partly what holds orange purple together as well. And now it has even better stats. So... Like, now it's a 3-4 instead of just a 2-4, if I recall correctly. So, like, now, like, this card is just a centerpiece of orange-purple. You really can't have orange-purple without this card. And it is a purple. Like, it gives an actual good item that you want. Probably the best item. Just just from ease of access and useful to usefulness and cheapness. Um... Jinsuk Dullmaster is a great card. I really liked the buff where it now costs 5. Yeah, it has one less health, but now it's cheaper, and uh, it's scary. Now you have a unit on the board that can do shifty stuff. And, sh man, I feel like that stuff's underplayed with green. The marching orders, I feel like that's underplayed with green. Jinsuk's very useful. This can just straight up remove a minion. And then, if you even survive long enough to get this, it's like game over, but usually that doesn't happen. Although, if it does happen, oh boy, you're in trouble. Um, Hungry Ghost, I feel like... I feel like this card's gonna be really good. Like, its stats are sweet now. Yeah. Like, I tried to get Red Purple to work with this once. Maybe I need to do, like, a life... Maybe I need to do a Blood Moon Hungry Ghost deck or something. I don't know. I feel like there's a way to make this work and make it really, really good. I just haven't discovered that combo yet. Because I was playing it, red, like, red-orange, and I don't think... I don't think you play red-purple like red-orange. Uh, there's probably a difference. Nine-Tailed Vixen's great for looping with Racer and Shadow, so you can just constantly play Racer and Shadows, make favorable trades, and then get them back because it's a spirit. It's also deadly, and it's a lurker. This card's somewhat easy to remove, but it's a very, very, very good card for purple. Rogue Eidolon is a very, very good card for purple. This is one of the best cards for purple. It really, really helps in locking down opponents. And uh, again, if you're not playing red orange, this card is a pain in the ass to deal with. Otherwise, you know, red orange can make can can deal with it. Um, you have to play around the Blast 3. This this card can absolutely dominate boards if you can't deal with it. Um, so, like, yeah, it's a very, very good card. Peach of Life is insanely good for purple. So, like, already, like, I'm noting a lot of cards that, like, purple is really likes, but, like, a lot of them don't feel connected to each other. Like, you look at a bunch of the red cards, you look at a bunch of the blue cards and all the cards, and they feel like they mesh together while all these feel... It feels like a hodgepodge of, like... It, it doesn't quite glue together. It's not quite there. We're, like, we're almost there. Almost there. I think one or... Like, one patch, and then we get there. Um, Racer and Shadow. Again, very great card. Terrigan is a pretty good card. I don't think it's Black and Jodin, but it's very close. This is one of Purple's centerpiece cards. Again, it's very nice. Reincarnation, I feel like it's one of the less good cards in here. Like, I feel like you won't, like you have dreams of getting six minions, but like that's just never going to happen. You probably just are best getting two or three. 
and then you get it back eventually, so it just encourages you to use this whenever you lose two or more minions, essentially. So, it has some value. I, I think this is a good card. I'm probably underrating it. Um, the, and these two cards are just like, yeah, we dare you to deal with this. This heals up for two every turn. This has armor too, and it can fully heal itself. So, like, good luck removing this unless you can literally spam eight cards at this and then also, or have Seal of Exile. Like, this card seems like such a pain to remove. It feels like it's also a win condition for purple. So, yeah, and Daigoju Supreme is also kind of close to a win condition. Like, you can just do four damage to your opponent and any minion in the opposing lane. It can heal. It's got a lot of health. But it feels like it's more removable than Perfect Grade. Although not by much. <laughs> so yeah, like right now, your, uh, your big fat units are just like, you play this, and then you play this, and then you play this, and you're, you just die inside, and purple wins. Um, again, it just, is that what purple is? Is purple just yellow? I don't know. I feel like purple should do a little bit more than that. It should be more different. And I, I, there are a lot of purple cards I feel like are just terrible, and I'm, I'm sure I'm just underrating them. Um, but I, I kind of sampled some cards, like Simzoo, and I guess looking at it now, it's like it's fine. It's a two-two for one, and you get a healing. But it's fine, I guess. I probably shouldn't include this. Steam Bun is like a one purple drop. Why is it one one? really it should it could at least be a 1-2 or a 2-1 like why is it a 1-1 one, one? all right you add a squire pike item you sacrifice this and draw a card okay whatever um again like you're spending two mana to draw a card i guess is that good uh i don't know i don't think that's good basically decoy right you're spending four mana to draw two cards and that's if you're lucky steam button's just kind of a small version of decoy i guess two mana add a one one steam button to your hand oh boy so i spend i spend two ma i basically spend three mana right i spend two mana but it's flexible i spend two mana get my one one and then i play it and then i get a steam uh i get a squire pike out of it so it's like a fancy reconstruct. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's okay. Like, maybe with like Pillar Peak or Cloud Peak or whatever, you can use this to put a minion on there, and then you don't really care about a 1 1 anyway, so you get your extra card draw. Maybe that could work. I never really thought about that. Maybe that's a thing you can do. Maybe you can use this to block things too. But it's just so easy to remove. You have to play this. So, in essence, like, in order to guarantee to get your thing, you have to play this. Pay your two, which you can't pay on the turn you play this, by the way, because it's a, it's one of these actions. So you have to wait a turn. So you can't even guarantee it. So it has to be already on the board. Uh, at least make it a blue pull down, or at least make this a 1-2, make it a little more survivable. Uh, it dies to literally everything. Uh... I would almost prefer this card costs more and it just has better stats. Then it would be more useful. Like, if it just as a turn one play, like, ugh, I don't want to play this. Ever. I feel like it would just be better if it costs more. And it had better stats. Like, if it costs, like, three mana and then it was just a 3-3. Three, three, and I don't know. I feel like that would be better in a way. Um, Shinobi of Wind. Of course it was going to be here. All right, now I have Swift instead of Teleport. Nothing really changed, I guess. It, now it feels more boring. Like, earlier when I had Teleport, you could at least do tricks with it. Right? Like, you could use your Impel, move it over to the other side of the board, and then swing and then do four damage. Yeah, it was kind of like a, a low-tier play, but it was still sometimes correct, and... I don't know. I just look at this card and, like... It's a 2-3 on a 3-mana drop. And it has to breach to do 2 damage to anyone. So you just put a minion opposite it. 
Oh, but there's Shinobi Wind of Smoke. They combo with each other, right? And they kind of do. They kind of do. They have Stealth and Teleport, which the moment you teleport, they'll know immediately it's Shinobi of Smoke. Um... I don't, I'm not even sure what the teleport really does. I guess it's to get away. But why would you get away in time before a Wyvern just smacks you down? Like, Wyvern deals with both of these cards. So anytime there's a stealth 3 drop, you just auto-drop a Wyvern and swing. Because if it's Shinobi of Wind, you're going to cry. And if it's a Shinobi of Smoke, you just trade. And you're happy with the trade. Also, these cards do really poorly in tournament. Right? To where... If you're playing a tournament and uh, you have your your deck revealed, um, you can't just run one of these. You have to run both of these, and they're both kind of shit. And you have to run both of these in your tournament, and your opponent will be like, oh, it's just one or the other. Well, I'm going to use my tournament RO and swing with Wyvern and trade. Otherwise, they'll know exactly what the stealth card is, and then it's just really pointless. So you have to run both of these in tournament, and at least in tournaments where they reveal your deck beforehand, like the 98 point whatever, uh, Winter Wonder Brawl or whatever it was called. So this is problematic, potentially, in that way. Um, also, they buffed this from a 3-2 to the 3-3. I remember that, um, I remember that the Rhino team was like, this is the change we're worried the most about. And I really couldn't care less. Like, really? This wasn't scarier to you than this? Really? Okay. Fine, I guess. Uh, like again, it just dies to anything that does 3 damage in Rush, which is Wyvern from Red. I guess other than that, it's potentially scary if you're not playing against a red-orange deck. It's scary. Like I guess now Trapeze Artists can't trade into it. Hey, that's a thing. And Trapeze Artist can't can, can't trade into this card anyway, so... I don't know. I, it's better. It's definitely better. It's it's definitely more of a threat than it used to be. It's So, there's that. You can't just play a minion opposite it now. You have to play a Rush minion. I guess that's a little bit different. Um, if you're not playing Red Orange, this is a bit scarier, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I... I if purple overall were stronger, it would be fine, but right now it feels too weak still. Uh, and this card is just a worse parry at the gates, which... It's parry at the gates, it's broken. It's a broken good card, so it's kind of not a fair comparison. But, like, come on, at least do some damage. At least do damage or have more health so you can use it as a blocker so that your opponent doesn't want to swing at it, but has to to remove it. Like, currently, it's like, this draws two cards. Okay? It's a slow balance, I guess? You play this, and your opponent won't swing, because what if you're running Mimic? And if they run Mimic, they lose two cards. Okay, if it's a Thriving Shade, then they just hold off a turn or two, and then they swing. And then Decoy just sits there. Until it dies when it draws a card, or... When a minion attacks this, you draw a card. Okay, so like it draws two cards, maybe. I don't know. It's passive. It feels too passive to me. It doesn't generate pressure. It just kind of sits there and your opponent is like, alright, well, off chance this is Thriving Shade, I eventually have to kill this. Like with Mimic, you don't want to swing because the moment you swing with your 4-4 four, four Mimic, they know it's a Mimic and then they'll just block the Mimic until they're ready to kill you. And then with Thriving Shade, you also don't want to swing. So it's like this these cards are just sitting there doing nothing for multiple turns. It feels so passive. And eventually your opponent's like, alright, time to deal with this. Let's swing at it. And it costs four. Like, ugh. Such a long-term awful investment. I don't know. I don't like it. It just feels too slow. All of those cards just feel too slow. Um, Hoarding Hero gets a 2-2 two, two when an item is used on it. This card... Uh, this card could be interesting. Um, there are certainly decks out there, and we'll talk about this shortly. There are decks out there that use, like, a Boneyard Abomination Volition sort of combo, because purple goes really well with yellow's win condition. Or, uh, say, yeah, like that. 
So this card could be good. You know, you can spam a bunch of healing potions on it and feather and swing and then win. Kind of like a cheap Boneyard. But it's also worse than Boneyard. But, it, you know, it's it's a way you can play with this card. But if you play with it not like that, if you play with this just like as is a card, okay, you play this card, you throw your healing potion on it, it's a 4-4 four, four for 3. Oh, that's, that's not bad. Throwing two healing potions on it. Hey, it's a 6-6. Six, six. That's not bad. Oh, your opponent just killed it and your items are gone and now it's gone. I don't know. It feels too weak. But it's also scary because, like, if you made this a 3-3, three, three, then it could maybe get out of hand. Maybe it needs to be a 2-3. Maybe 2-3 is fine. I don't know. It feels slightly too weak. I feel like I'd never play with this card. Because it's just like you invest so much and then you put this down and put all your items on it. It's like you spend all your time for a while. Just like one minion you can remove. Okay. That's not very flexible. Oh, uh, we talked about this card. Zen Archer. That's a one fucking two. Yeah, we'll play one Thunderclap. Casually kill you. Okay. Cool. I mean, that's really all you need to say. Like, it's a one two on turn three. Like, that's so shit. Okay, as a lurker. Add a Phoenix Feather item to your hand. It's a two item that gives your minion agile and maybe swift. I can't remember. Yeah, that item's good. But you have to play a 1-2 to get it. So you're not playing this card for the card. You're playing this card for the item. And then if you look at Purple's great cards, this already has Agile. This card probably doesn't need Agile because... You already have this here that can kill things, and it has Swift, so like it can even move one and then move twice even, then spend this. It can move, swing, spend this as regen. This perfect grade card here, yeah, it can just deal four damage to any other minion. Yeah, it can just do two damage to minions in the opposing three lanes. It can fully heal itself. It doesn't need Agile. So like, when you look at this card, you're like, okay, I have this feather, but like all the big units don't care. Terrigan already has overrun. Uh, Lighthouse, whatever, already has overrun. What the fuck do you need this feather for? It doesn't do anything. I guess you use it for a, the color it supports, I guess. I guess that's what you use it for. A card that's not purple. <laughs> oh joy, just like the rest of purple. Ugh, that's why I don't like purple. It's too supporty, it needs to like do its own thing. Um, when an enemy minion attacks, it must first take one damage. Okay, so every time I swing, so like any one health minions just die and they can't swing. So this has a controlly element to it, but it's a one two. It's so easy to remove. It's so easy to remove, and it's so expensive for how easy it is to remove. So do you care? Okay, and you get a Phoenix Feather item that doesn't help inside of purple, really. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh, this card's awful. I feel like, I feel like it's just way too under, understated for what it gives you. Ugh. Ugh. Ugh, I don't like it. And this card's, like, maybe the worst of them all. Like, this card, I think, used to be a 3-2 or a 2-3. Oh, joy, now it's a 3-3. Like, ooh, that, ooh, it's so, ooh, four, 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 hell, four mana for this? <laughs> uh, then you destroy an unoccupied enemy enchantment. So this is just, you literally just put this in your deck because Auro is so strong that you have to remove that Hades and that Heaven. And it's literally useless outside of that. Like, ugh. <laughs> that card is so bad. It's so bad. Oh, uh, no. No. And th these are just the cards I did pick. Like, there are so many other cards that I just feel like are bad. I, like, I could shit on purple all day. And I would be wrong about some of these, right? Because, like, again, they're all situationally okay. But the situation is, like, incredibly, like, specific very narrow and a lot of these narrow specific things don't overlap 
So, like, yeah, purple's just too shotgun spread out. It needs to be more focused in on something, and it that's a huge problem with purple. Purple overall. Survive long enough to get value off of Peach and play big minions. So yellow, basically. But also worse than yellow. Like, the big minions are also, like, are... Like, part and parcel, the big minions can be scarier than yellow's minions. But also, it's early game and mid game are just so much worse. You don't want to play any purple minions unless you're getting, like, a very good item off of it. Or you're playing, like, Hotel Barkeep or Eraser. And then everything else is, like, you just play yellow cards. Ugh, that's gross. Seems like purple should be able to stand on its own like the other factions, but currently it feels directionless in terms of win conditions. Like, playing this on turn 6 should not be a win condition. It's too vague. It's it's like too specific. Oh, I play a big minion number. And like, it feels like yellow, it feels like green, and it does both of those. Like, both of those colors are just strictly better than purple. I feel like in like the stealth and the items don't really contribute towards that. It feels like a slapped on mechanic, kind of like deserts. Like it just it it's, doesn't work. It's it's incomplete. It's it's incomplete. It's not ready. It's not it's not fully baked. There needs to be like one thing. Um, the buffs helped establish a late game presence for purple. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be a decent early game presence. Like your best early game card is. Hotel Barkeep on turn 3. All the other cards are like... I guess the next best card after Hotel Barkeep for your turn 1 play that I didn't include on your best lists here. Like, in terms of minions, we're not talking about Tea House. Just in terms of minions would be uh, the Chef, Battle Chef. Battle Chef's item is pretty good. But it's a you know, but it's a two two on turn two. But you can play the battle chef item on another minion and make it really annoying. Like Thane. Thane loves that card. Um so yeah, battle chef's okay, I guess. But no one really then like half of purple people use battle chef, the other half don't. <sighs> I don't whoops. I don't know. I'm not I'm not very happy with purple's early game. How to improve purple? I have some ideas, but again, these are just ideas to get the joggin' noggin. I mean, noggin joggin, whatever the saying is. Um, <clears throat> purple could do with more with value distribution mechanics. That that's like unique, right? Items are a start, and it has some cards that do that. It could be how it wins, like you outvalue your opponent. So like more cards like Koi, Juiced, etc. Like couple more cards like that and make them actually good so that purple just plays them that would be cool um based off the value distribution idea maybe purple should have more cards that let you choose options this kind of fits in with the equality flavor that purple has you know like everyone's unified and harmonic like you, you get a real like equality like everyone everyone like we all work together kind of vibe off of purple and like having more cards that are like that is cool like juiced and koi again is a start um, so, like, be able to choose things, you know, like, have options with cards, like, notarize reality, but good, you know, like, you know what I'm talking about? Um, this fits in with the equality flavor purple has, like, maybe Koi should let you choose which minion in hand gets the 2-2, just as an example, I mentioned that earlier. Um, have more cards that interact with powers, maybe, like Hotel Barkeep, maybe have more cards that do that for purple, that could be interesting, I don't have any ideas for that, maybe just that would help buff the early game minions more or else buff the control cards more um or add more control cards like pick something as purple currently it's not good enough at one thing i feel like it just needs a direction to go in and even with this buff it doesn't feel like it has a clear direction the clearest direction is this and this and this and i don't know maybe that's enough I feel like it's not enough. Having a more consistent theme would go a long way in, in establishing a stronger purple. And when I say theme, I don't mean flavor. I don't mean... They have a spirit realm and a virtual realm and a Yakuza realm. Like, I don't care. 
all right like themes cool but i'm talking about like competitive like having a more consistent way that purple plays that feels different and unique and special like yellow controls things yellow smashes you and outraces you blue does everything but better than the way purple does everything uh orange outvalues you green steals your lunch money and uses spells like they have very clear play styles and purple doesn't have a clear play style it oh you slap an item on something like it's uh it's not good enough like uh it's a means to get to that play style but we're not at the play style it doesn't feel right purple potential at the moment we're going to talk about some of the decks that are good and i have to mention that a lot of these decks feel like extensions of what the other faction wants rather than something purple explicitly does leading to an increased feeling of merely being a support faction which just, just that's why purple feels bad it doesn't feel right it's not there it, it's it's not where it should be in my opinion um you got your orange purple anime town classic probably the current strongest purple deck maybe not i'm not sure i'm not a purple expert <laughs> it's just really funny considering i'm making this video uh, green purple control I've been seeing some of this um, I think the mithril or champion player uh, near is playing with this deck with uh, some success I haven't really checked it out but I'm hearing good things about it green purple necromantic uh, of course you got your huge huge purple minions that are scary and yeah good luck dealing with the perfect grid on turn five like that's gonna be fucking annoying hoarding hero volition variant I thought I came up with this on my own, and then I brought it up in Discord chat, and like three people have already done it. So, there's nothing new under the sun. Like, <laughs> there's nothing clever left for me to do. Everyone's done it already. I, th I thought I was some badass thinking that up. I'm like, ooh, nope. Probably more stuff to come. It's still very early in the buff period. Um, again, it's every. The meta is always changing. Um, we're going to find out very soon that purple is broken. The, the strongest color in the game. Uh, all right. Like, <laughs> it's going to happen. Because especially since I made this video, which I'd be happy with, honestly. Because, like, again, I just, uh, purple doesn't have, like, a consistent thing it does. I, it needs that thing. It's almost there. Almost there. So, let me know what you think in the comments section. Um, please be polite. I, again, um, I don't want to deal with people yelling at me or something, or, you're wrong! Like, just, just please be polite. Um, I really don't want to deal with crap. I, I know everyone loves purple, so, um, sorry to rain on your parade, and, uh, see you all later. Uh, let me know what you think.